And so I was at a point in my life where I realized I wanted to find something that was more aligned with what I truly wanted to do in terms of my life purpose, what I felt called to do. And so when I originally went to university, my intention was to become a doctor. I'd wanted to be a doctor my entire life, ever since I can remember. And then when I was in my second year of college, I, I kind of fell apart. My, I think probably my first experience with serious depression, first work that was required for medical school, I just, I didn't like any of it and I wasn't good at it. And so I went to see an academic counselor at that point. And he's, you know, I had done quite well the previous year. And so he seemed to think that I was capable on the academic front of doing it. And that I just wasn't interested in the classes. I don't think he understood the level of mental and emotional suffering I was in at the time. And I probably didn't share that much with him. I don't remember. But basically he said, you know, you either have to just buckle down and do the work or you should just do the classes that you enjoy. <laughs> I, thought, I didn't think it was a choice to buckle down and do the work. I didn't have the bandwidth within me. And I didn't think about getting support around how to help me with organic chemistry and calculus and all of these things. And so I just took the courses that I really enjoyed and what I was really finding enlivening and educational were the courses I was taking in geography, cultural geography, human geography. And so I went on to do my master's. I uh, studied in Latin America, uh, did some research there and wrote my master's th thesis and then realized that I don't have the juice for this anymore. And I really, at that point in time, when I was studying in Latin America, I got very sick with parasites and I went to the Western medical doctors and they were telling me there was nothing wrong with me. And I knew that I was not myself and they couldn't figure it out. And so I started a path. That's really where I got into yoga, meditation, natural health, naturopathy. And so it opened up a whole world that I'd never experienced before and I really fell in love with it and so as part of that journey and part of what was to do with my falling apart in the second year of college I think that part of it was that I had just always learned to kind of not be with my feelings by working hard and looking for external success and there was a, a bad car accident that I was in and I wasn't badly injured. I just had some minor whiplash, but it was one of those moments where as I was like, am I going to die? Like I really thought I was going to die in this car accident. And rather than having sort of this incredible gratitude for life afterwards, I just went on this tailspin. It just, it really, it was, it was a waking up, but through a dark night of the soul or a dark night of the ego, as they say. As part of that, the realization that, you know, based on childhood experiences, you know, way things played out with my mother and my father, I hadn't had contact with my dad. So I was very young and he, he left, uh, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. And there's always two sides or more in a sense to a story. I, I know he wasn't in my life. And I started to look in the direction of the, the pain and the suffering that I experienced as a result of that. And I think that was part of what I was coming to terms with in a way that I hadn't acknowledged that during that time. And so as part of that journey, there was a point here, I decided that I was going to find him and he was living in, I knew he was living in England at the time. And so I was living in Canada. And so I decided I was doing my research in Guatemala. I got a job at a, a Guatemalan textile museum in London. And so I had everything set up to move to England after I finished my master's thesis to try and find my dad. A few months before, in the spring before I was supposed to leave, Angus and I met. So I wasn't a professional model at the time. I was getting my hair cut for free at Vidal Sassoon, exchange for doing, you know, occasional modeling things for them. And so I'm in the middle of my thesis. My hairdresser says, can you come in? We're doing um, a shoot and I'd really like you to be part of it. If you know, if you get chosen because you have to get picked. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm too busy. I've got this thesis. It was getting down to the wire. I think it was February. I needed it done by May and I had a lot to do. And so I'm like, no, I can't do it. And he said, well, we have this really 
lovely photographer coming photographer coming from England. I really think you should meet him. And there was something inside of me that's just like, okay, I'll come <laughs> forget about the thesis. And so I went and it was one of those moments where they, he, this is funny. He told me because I was a student, I didn't really, you know, couldn't afford nice clothes in a sense, wasn't really caring that much about how I looked. He said, he said, come in the back door. <laughs> You're going to come in the back entrance and I've got some clothes for you. And we're going to do your hair and makeup and go in front of whoever the people were that were choosing to see if you can be chosen for this. And so I'm going in the back entrance, I'm walking up the back stairs and who's coming down the back stairs, but Angus. So in the pre you know, adorned form we meet and there was just a really beautiful connection that we both noticed it. There was just a spark that was there. And so that's how Angus and I met. And so I moved to England and the, the textile museum that I was working at it wasn't working out a couple of levels. One, there were a lot of preservatives used in the materials to keep them, you know, bright and, and to, so they don't degrade. And I was allergic to that. I'd get these really bad headaches. And it, the setup was that I would have free rent for my work. That was part of how I was being compensated. And I wasn't really happy with where I was living. And so I said to Angus, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? <laughs> and he says, well, you know, why don't you just try some modeling and I can see if I can get, you know, help get you into an agency. Maybe that will help you out since you don't know what to do. And so that was kind of how I fell into it. It was one of those things where he introduced me to an agency. They accepted me. And then shortly after that, flown to Milan and Angus thought he would never see me again because it was like things just kind of took off in a way that nobody was really expecting. So it was by happenstance. It was, it was something that really helped me have something to do to earn an income, figuring out what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I'm obviously still figuring that out. But through that was how I eventually came to the US, both of us working here in that field. And then I went and did a master's in spiritual psychology. And that sort of was the beginning of me getting licensed as a therapist and starting on this uh, next iteration.